welcome to what I call salubrious salon which in many ways is the most exciting place to be in County Kildare with the opening of its new bypass or more accurately a new section on the R407 Nace Train Regional Road which features two dramatic new bridges over the River Liffey and will transform life in and around Salons. Salons has a great heritage of transport engineering and it's a good place to begin our visit to the village is at Salons Railway Station, the first point of contact for many visitors to the area. Salons Railway Station was built by the Great Southern and Western Railway in the 1840s. In their construction they thought of style as well as function. So it's built in an imitation Tudor style with steep gables, pinnacles and coats of arms. Many celebrated people passed through Salon Station over the years. One associated with Clem's own county in County Clare, Percy French, a Roscommon man who wrote one of the most famous train ballads of all time, Are You Right There, Michael? Are You Right? Now, he was complaining about the poor nature of the train service in Clare in the 1840s, not about Salon's. But we know that Percy French performed in Nace and in Balting Glass, so he must have changed trains in Salon Station. Another literary figure to make reference, if you like, to Salons in literary terms was James Joyce, who was a pupil at uh, Trongos in the 1880s. And in his semi-autobiographical memoir, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, he writes of his life as a student in Trongos, and particularly the end of term, when they would travel on horse and cart from Trongos, which is to the west of Clain, the five or six miles to Salon Station to go home to their respective counties for the Christmas or summer break. And he writes very colourfully about the boys so delighted with getting out of school that as the train pulls out of the station, they're throwing their caps out the window of the train. Another celebrated visitor through Salons in terms of rail was King Edward VII, who made a visit to Punchestown Races in 1904 and whose train changed tracks onto the Tullow branch line at Salons. There's a story going that the king was to be received with an address of welcome outside Nace Town Hall by the then chairman of the council. But he tapped his driver and said, hurry on, I have a good tip for the first race. I don't want to wait for a speech. But that's another story. One piece of railway history, I suppose, that Salons could do without, and that's the constant references that used to be made to the Salons mail train robbery in 1976. Now, that robbery took place four or five miles on the Dublin side of Salons, nearer to Stratford. But because Salons was the last station that the mail train had passed through, the label Salons took. And for years, there were long-running court cases and inquiries and all the rest of it. But really, Salons knew nothing about that particular episode. In modern times, Salon Station closed to passenger traffic in 1963, but gained a new lease of life in 1992, when the then Minister of Transport, Ms. Maura Gagan Quinn, the first female cabinet minister indeed since Constance Markovitz, arrived there on a special train in 1992 to announce the refurbishment of Salons as a commuter station. And it's been a very popular facility under that heading ever since, with people from a wide catchment area converging there to board their trains to the city and beyond. Leaving the railway station then, we go back into the main street of Salons and note the appropriately named Railway Inn and then take a right turn where we look at then one of, I suppose, North Calair's hidden gems. And that's the extraordinary structure of the Tin Church, more properly named the Church of Our Lady and the Guardian Angels in Salons. Now, we're accustomed to seeing churches built of brick and slate and of concrete. This church is made of tin and timber and looks as fresh now as when it was installed first in 1924. There had been plans for a number of years in the early 1900s to build a church in Salons, which was then part of Nath Parish. But the First World War intervened and the plans stalled. So the parish priest, Father Norris, who lived to be over than 100, ordered literally you could call an Ikea-built church of its time, a kit-built church which came in packs from a firm in Camberwell in London and was assembled on the site and opened in 1924 and has been a place of worship for Salon's people ever since. 
Immediately outside the church is an old stone font. And this is a link with the very early, I suppose, spiritual history of the location. When Salins was created as an independent parish for Nace in the early 70s, the first parish priest, Father Larry Newman, very appropriately acquired this stone font, which came from an old church site with the lovely name of Bride's Church or St. Bridget's Church, situated on the bank of the River Liffey, about two miles south of Salence. And he placed this stone font in the grounds of the, the church to symbolise, although Salence was being created as a new parish, it had very ancient links with the religious history of the locality. Also in the grounds of the church is the, the church bell, and it's a little bit of a curiosity, because if you inspect it on its frame, you'll see that it's made by Sheridan Bellmaker Dublin in 1860. Now, we know the church was built in the 1920s, so where did this bell come from in the decades before then? But what's also interesting about it is that it's a cousin of the bell, which is in the loft of Nace Town Hall, which used to ring on the hour when the Nace Town Hall clock reached the hour in terms of time. We move on then just a few yards onto the bank of the Grand Canal. And in many ways, the vista is occupied with boats of all shapes and sizes. Approximately 60 boats moored either side of the Canal Bridge. Salins, in many ways, is almost the Amsterdam of Ireland because there are probably more people living on board boats in Salins than in any other inland harbour in Ireland. And it adds greatly to the character of the village. There are several directions we can go to from here. We can go onward to Bowden's Town, the burial place of the Patriot Wolf Tone, which was the scene of enormous pilgrimages in the early 1900s, and where indeed many of the leaders of the 1916 revolution came on Bowden's Town Sunday in the month of June. Another direction we can go is along the bank of the canal to the Leinster Aqueduct, which takes the canal across the River Liffey. And perhaps we can sum up the richness, if you like, of heritage in the transport engineering area in Salins by just thinking about this. From Salins, a direction we can go is along the very appealing walk along the towpath, soon to be part of the nationwide greenway system. And that takes us to the Leinster Aqueduct, a spectacular engineering feature which takes the Grand Canal across the River Liffey. And if we look at the plaque, we can see it's built in 1783. A little bit down the road, there's a railway bridge at Osbertstown, which was built in 1883. And just a few hundred metres from that, the Nace Bypass Motorway Bridge, which was built in 1983. Each of them a pioneering engineering achievement in its time. Canal, rail and road, 1783, 1883, 1983. Nowhere else in Ireland has such a chronological or geographic coincidence of transport engineering history.